My, my response to that, I'm glad you mentioned Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a very mm. typical example of how the misunderstanding arises uh, between mm -hmm. the West and China and the United States and China. Now, I want to go back to my point about the 193 countries in the world. Mm. And of the countries that are concerned about Hong Kong, I guarantee you almost no African country is interested in Hong Kong. Right? I do not know of, uh, maybe except for Japan, uh, any other Asian country that speaks out on Hong Kong. Uh, in fact, uh, you mentioned India. Uh, in this book, Has China Won? I tell a story of how, I think in 1961 or 62, President John F. Kennedy of United States and Prime Minister Harold Macmillan of United Kingdom wrote a letter to the Anglophile Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, and said, hey, we understand you're going to invade Goa. Don't invade Goa, please. It's let Portugal run Goa. I think within a week or two of receiving the letter, Nehru invaded Goa, took back Goa, and said Goa belongs to India, please. So in the same way as Nehru thinks that Goa belongs to India, Chinese think that Go Hong Kong belongs to China. And as far as I know, apart from the Western countries, in no other, uh, out of the 193 countries in the world, take out the Western countries, the remaining countries don't say anything about Hong Kong. And also, this is another important statistic, only 12% of the world's population lives in the West. 88% lives outside the West. So in terms of your point about does China listen to opinions, I think the Chinese pay attention to the 88% figure. And, and I think that's what is missing in the Anglo-Saxon media, an incapacity to understand that 88%, the thinking of the 88%. Thank you.